So, what's it all about, Rome? Just asking for a friend. Salutations to the Truth Core, whoever and wherever you may be on the planet. This is John Lash, the founder of Nemata, the Sofianic School of Arts and Sciences. So, what's it all about, Rome? Well, I read it as a moment of tremendous tension. And imminence. I have to say that over the past few weeks, I have grown increasingly confident of the measures that the Aeonic Mother is taking in the Big Loop. I am certain that there is enormous pushback and backlash in the Big Loop against the Great Reset, the COVID-19 psyop, and. The whole nine yards, and so as that happens, our attention goes intensely to our role in the small loop. So the whole movement now, very great momentum of our time, is the coming of the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction at the winter solstice in 2020, which happens every 20 years, but in fact is tracked according to. 60-year cycles, because it happens every 60 years in the same area of the zodiac. So the upcoming conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn in one degree of Aquarius, which is in the eye of the goldfish, in the face of the goldfish, goes back 60 years. Doesn't go back 20 years to the last Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. There are three cycles. It's called the Great Trigon. There are three distinct rhythms of Jupiter-Saturn conjunctions. So, 60 years ago, well, what was that? Well, from 2020, you subtract 20, you get the year 2000, and you subtract 40 from that, and you get 1960. How do you like that? That was only 60 years ago, huh? Seems like yesterday. The upcoming 
conjunction in 2020 is in the sequence and continuity of the conjunction in 1960, at the beginning of the 60s. It certainly has been one of the more intensely studied planetary cycles of all, and there have been, uh, there's a great deal that has been written about this coming forward from records which survive, derived from Arabian astronomers of the, what, 9th or 10th centuries. When you look at the goldfish, you see that the distinguishing stars are in the head. There are two points of the horns indicated by two stars, and then the point, consider the two horns as a V, and then the base of the horns on the forehead of the goldfish is another star. All these three stars lie in the range of about three to four Aquarius, while the conjunction actually happens in one Aquarius. So depending on the way that you would draw the graphics of the constellation, you would actually place the conjunction not in the head, but directly in the face, directly in the front of the gaze of the goldfish, before the face. Also, most importantly, the star called Altair, which is the brightest star in the constellation of Aguila, the eagle, Aguilar, has an alignment of two Aquarius. 302 on the ecliptic. So you see the exact place where the conjunction happens on the 21st is very close to these positions. So immediately at the end of December and going into January and February, Jupiter and Saturn will hit these positions. So once again, why am I being so elaborate about this? It indicates the action of seeing something clearly before you act on it. A good meme for the 2020 conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn would be 2020 hindsight, retrospect, seeing everything in retrospect in 2020 vision. The way I read that is that from this moment on, the winter solstice of this year, it's no longer necessary to look back Whatever you don't know by that moment about how we got into this shit mess, you don't need to know. Whatever you do know about how we got into this mess, how the TADs and A-10 got into this mess by abdicating their own sovereignty, believing in the authorities, and wallowing in their, in their illusions of freedom, well, everything you know about that is all you have to know. The gaze shifts to the future at the winter solstice. I want you to contemplate that and get a feel for that rhythm. Live into this event as intimate witnesses of the correction of the Aeon Sophia. I want you to make a point of taking some part of your time and part of your practice in building up the expectation of this event in bringing your moral and imaginative power to that moment, to build into that moment, and to design the moment along with the aeonic powers. That practice is the consummation of my life work and also it is the consummate skill, or one of the consummate skills that you can learn in celestics and in planetary tantra. Enough said, and I'll be seeing you one more time in the beauty to come.